Hey there, Stephen Fox Can Farms. So, we're raising Cornish Cross uh, broilers, chickens, and um, I took a series of videos. And so, what you're about to see is just a whole bunch of different clips of the videos, things that have gone on during the life of these uh, Cornish Cross chickens, which uh, we're raising uh, some on behalf of some other people. And I'm not really sure how these clips are going to come together in the video, but I'm just giving you a heads up, these next videos, I'll probably do different parts, will be broken up, kind of jump around a lot, not a lot of explanation, but in the end, this will really sort of be the chronicles of a Cornish Cross chicken, if you will. So, sit back and enjoy. Okay, chicks are here. I don't know if you can hear them. There's supposed to be about 60 in there. There's a uh, plastic tie around the top that's been cut. We're going to open it up slowly here and take a peek so you can have a peek and then we'll get going on getting them in the brooder. There they are. Okay, let's get them in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is try to use the horizontal uh, nipple waterer, and we've pushed on the on the uh, on the on them a little bit so that we get some water in the tray a little bit. But we'll take the beaks and just dip their beaks in there, and that's what we do. And we'll be counting them as we go. And then just push that in so they get more water there, so they learn. And that's all you do, is try to get them used to that, and hopefully they know that, that what they do is they learn that there's water there. And then... And then hopefully they'll start using those. We see some are coming up there and they're using it. Hopefully they're able to move it enough and get the water out. So we'll see how it goes. If not, we'll have to revert back to the normal sort of tray waterer and then uh, sort of train them back into using this one because this one is a lot cleaner and a lot easier to use. There we go, and so then what we do is we also keep pushing on them to make sure there's water in those trays, and they peck at it, and they see that water there, and keep doing that. We keep the, those trays filled for quite a while, and just kind of monitor them. You can see, if we can get the camera right here, you can see they're just running around, and they've already found the heat over there, the heat location, and there's one pecking away at the food, so we're going to just... Let this camera roll. Okay, so here they are. You can see those chicks are really going after that, that water. So we're really happy with that. The real test will be whether or not uh, they're getting enough water. And getting, you know, whether the water level is going down. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that. 
and see whether or not we need to put in a, just a regular tray waterer if we have any concerns about whether they're getting enough water. So you can see they've, they're running around, so that's a good sign that some, some are under the heat lamp warming up, some are running around, some are pecking at the food once in a while, and a lot of them are going after the water. There they go. That's how it works. They all sort of fall asleep and then all of a sudden one pops up and they all just go. Okay, we're at day six. Um, so on day one, we our order ended up getting mixed up and we were short about 12 broilers. Now that may not sound a lot like a lot when you order 60 but in our case it had a pretty big impact or could have had a big, pretty big impact because um, just of our our coop space we have to do some juggling this year this is the year we get a, a new laying flock we were able to find um, <clears throat> find some additional brothers at a different uh, different store. Unfortunately, one of my kids went to pick them up and they just had them in a bin, right? And, you, and then the one of the store people picks them out and you may have already noticed the size difference there. It, my son said he wanted the ones that were, they said they had one week and two week old ones and he said he wanted them all to be the smaller ones so that they would match up with ours and the lady said, uh, Oh, it's not going to make that big of a difference. And she sort of shrugged him off and said, whatever. And so we ended up with eight. It looked to me like they're two weeks, if not three weeks old. It's been a while, but you can see some bigger ones in there. So we're going to have some really big chickens when it comes time for butchering. And that can have an effect on the, the quality or taste of the meat, if you will. I guess the taste of it. Sometimes it can get a little dry if they get too big, but... But we'll have our full chickens, we'll keep those, <clears throat> and we'll be able to move forward. But yeah, you can see they are quite active, and they are spread all over the place. And that's a good sign. That means that the heat is, is reasonably correct. Okay, day 10, I think. Just gave them a fresh set of... Uh, fresh layer of bedding. I'm going to try to put this camera down in here and again you can see that some of these were a different size. We're going to have some visitors here pretty soon. And watch what they do when they see this light. Okay. Look what I found. It's a June bug. Now watch this.
It's one of the few times you see a broiler move fast. When they get older, we won't see this happen. <laughs>